So welcome back everybody. On my last video, I had a particular shot of the tractor rolling past the garden. And in that shot, there were several tomato plants and somebody asked, hey, what do you have planted in your garden this year? And that got me thinking that that would be a pretty good video idea just to go out into the garden and show what I've got planted and tell about the tips and the tricks and the stuff that I have learned this year about gardening. Gardening has really given me a lot of joy this year. This is the first year that we have had a really good garden. I'm really, really pleased with it and I would love to to share it with y'all so instead of just answering the comment we're going to go out into the garden and show you what i've got planted and and just talk for a few minutes about what has worked and what has not worked now i'm really interested to see how much interest there is in gardening on this channel most of this channel of course deals with turning logs into lumber but i think there's probably a kindred spirit there as far as outdoor work goes i think most of the people who enjoy seeing lumber come out of trees uh, enjoy watching other stuff grow as well so let's go ahead and get started and i will give you all a shot of what's going on in the garden this year so i'm filming this with my phone so i certainly hope that the audio and the video turn out well the phone usually does a pretty fair job so right off the bat a little quick pan of the garden but right off the bat to the right as you walk in i've got some strawberries planted these are canalt strawberries they are a uh, ever bearing variety of strawberry and i only planted them this year and I've been very pleased with them so far. They're nice looking plants and they have, uh, they're actually putting out some strawberries. I've had a few already and they seem to taste pretty good. I have fertilized them, I think maybe one time with some triple tin. And of course I've kept them, uh, well, I'll talk to you later on about the spray and the and other stuff that I'm using out here. But, but so that's a, that's probably the best one that has come out so far. The rest of them have been kind of small. There's another one turning red over there. Uh, we have actually a strawberry farm close to where we live, but the strawberries there are so expensive and they just seem to get more expensive every year. I decided I'd start, try to start planting my own. So the next little row right here, I've got some cucumbers and these are just heirloom straight eight cucumbers. Nothing real special about them. This is the first year that I've tried to grow them in these tomato cages. I usually don't buy store-bought tomato cages. I just had some, uh, some cattle wire laying around and I made some and uh, it works really, really well. Of course it was free, so that was the best part. So like I said, these are uh, heirloom straight eight cucumbers, just some standard old school cucumbers. And what I'm doing with these is just training them up in these tomato cages so they won't run all over the garden. So like this right here, I'll come out here and these kind of get out of the cage sometimes and I'll just train them back in and Usually once that happens, they'll start growing back in and grab a hold with those little runners and get back to where I want them. Anyway, there's a little small one right there. They're coming along pretty well. This is a volunteer sunflower that kind of came up by itself. I had pl sunflowers planted here last year. And I've had a couple that have decided to come back up this year, which is nice because my wife loves sunflowers. The next row over here, is uh squash and this is just some standard crook neck yellow heirloom squash well i guess it's heirloom i really don't know but you can see i've got one little fruit on this one it's something interesting i just recently discovered i learned this through a friend these squash leaves are actually edible as greens and i had no idea and so of course i came out and tasted them one day and they're a little bit fuzzy but they don't taste half bad and of course the blooms are also edible they taste kind of taste kind of bland but they're they're fluffy and nice we are just getting to the point where stuff is starting to bear. That's a pretty nice little squash right there. This plant down here on the end has been the overachiever so far. Actually, I think it's the oldest plant. This one came from seeds. The rest of them came from, uh, came from potted plants, but this one is really coming along well. This next row over here is zucchini squash, and these, these plants are doing really well too. I've already got some zucchinis coming on. If you can see, there's a there's a small one right there, and this one, this plant has actually got quite a few on it, but these seem to be doing pretty well. But these are real susceptible to wind. They get real top heavy, unfortunately, and just kind of get blown around. Um, sometimes I'll come out and ride them back up and maybe put a rock on them or something. Didn't weed before I did this video, so y'all are really getting a real, a real shot of what the garden looks like. Next row over here, I've got some jalapeno peppers planted. We're not huge uh, jalapeno eaters, but I have, uh, my wife likes to cook chili and she throws jalapenos in that. So we decided to plant some of those this year. I've also got a coworker that enjoys these. 
and I'll be bringing them to work with me as well. But as you can see, you can get a closer shot here. They are, they are really coming on strong, especially on this plant. If you can see that, I hope y'all can see that, but there's, a, there's one right there. And this plant has actually got several, several, several peppers on it. It's doing really, really well. This next row, I've got a couple of eggplants planted and we're not real big fans of eggplants, but we decided that we'd plant some stuff, particularly for the babies, so we could make baby food out of it. And as you can see, I've got some blooms on it, so I should have some eggplants very soon. Uh, this is the first time I've ever planted eggplants, but they seem to be doing pretty well. This next area is something really odd. Uh, this is not something that really gets planted in my area. I decided I would try it out this year. These are what you call lazy housewife pole beans, and we built this trellis right here for them. These will actually run seven to nine feet in height, and my understanding is that they will grow and grow and grow and be very bushy and nice and beautiful, and then when it starts getting cooler towards August or September, then they start bearing. But they're a very old variety of bean, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I just I planted a lot of beans this year because I guess I just like beans, but these are called lazy housewife pole beans. This next row is kind of an experiment, I guess you could say. I, 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 Y'all have seen this gentleman before. There's a gentleman that comes around and helps me about once a week here. And we were planting the garden a couple months ago and we, he just stuck some eggplant seeds in the ground and I didn't really didn't think anything would happen, but well, they have just come up left and right. And I, you can see I've thinned the ends of these rows. A couple of these little bunches I have thinned. I'm kind of doing an experiment to see what the different what difference that makes as far as the thinning. I'm going to leave those bunches. Probably I'm going to leave those on the end and just see what the difference is in the growth rate and the health of these plants as they grow in comparison to others that have not been thinned. So these are just eggplants. They're quite small because they were grown from seeds and they weren't started inside, which is not quite the way you're supposed to do it, but they came up, so I'm just going to leave them. This next section has really stolen my heart this year. This is my tomato. This is my tomato section of the garden. I have loved watching these things grow and maintaining these. I've got several different varieties planted and they are just doing uh, just really, really well this year. This particular plant is a Roma tomato. I planted these. My wife enjoys these Roma tomatoes. It's doing pretty well. You can see I've already got some fruit coming on. And uh, yeah, these are these are doing really well. Uh, right here, this is a let's get the, let's get the label so you can see. This is a Sweet Million Hybrid Cherry Tomato. This will put out a whole bunch of nice small sweet fruit. You can already see they're coming on pretty well. They grow in these little bunches just like that, and they will be very nice. They'll be very abundant and very sweet and nice. This next one is a, a grape tomato plant. A grape, I'm not sure what that Tammy G is, but it's a hybrid grape tomato. And this plant has really proven itself to be quite prolific so far. I don't have any red ones yet. I mean, it is just putting out fruit like like it's going out of style here. I hope you can see that with the... Oh, there we go. That's a good shot. There we go. Look at that. It is really, really producing a ton of fruit, and they're really nice really nice little fruits and I think they're gonna be really delicious. So most of my tomato plants are better boy tomatoes and those are just a good sandwich variety. They grow fairly large and um, very juicy and they're very sweet and good for, for our sandwiches. We love we love uh, BLTs here with corn on the cob and of course you can see a, got another volunteer sunflower coming up there. But got a lot of fruit coming on. I'm at the point now where I'm going to have to start worrying about blossom rot and I've actually I'll actually show y'all what I'm doing about that here in a minute but they are really coming on strong. I am very pleased with them. It's interesting to see these various stages of growth. You've got some very small better boys right here on the same plant. You've got some medium sized fruit a little bit larger here on the bottom. Give you a shot of the tag here. These are really, really, really excellent tomatoes, and they go good with just on, just on a plain, plain couple of pieces of white bread, mayonnaise, bacon, and lettuce, or right by themselves with salt and pepper. It's really hard to beat these right here. Actually, a couple of tomatoes that I wanted to try. I wanted to try some yellow tomatoes, so I went to Home Depot this morning. I had to go there anyway, and I got some Lemon Boy hybrid tomato. 
Uh, those are, I assume those are bigger tomatoes. Then I got some yellow pear heirloom cherry tomatoes and you can see what those produce. But uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see these and to see what these turn into. But I, I need, I'm gonna have to stop going to Home Depot by myself. Our local Home Depot has got a very, very, very beautiful selection of nice bonnie plants. And uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, not real good with my wallet when I go in there and see them. Tomato suckers is something that I've been trying to stay on top of this year. These little suckers right here, all it is is a little shoot, a little extra branch that grows in the crotch of two of the main branches on a tomato plant. And you can leave them there and they will continue to grow. They'll bear fruit of their own but that saps nutrients away from the main plant. Your fruit may not be as nice and big. And uh, this, I have found, well, this is the first year I've really controlled these suckers, but the plants seem to be doing really, really well. So, uh, so far it has seemed to be pretty good practice to get these suckers off of there and let the, let the main plant take the bulk of those nutrients. So of course it's very important to get those suckers off while they are still very small. This is a sucker that I did not catch, and of course it has become it has become its own branch. Uh, we'll look at the end of it in a minute to see if it's got blooms or even fruit on it. But I would not remove this one because I think it would do much more damage to the plant than it would than it would uh, than it would help. But you can see that that is almost as big as my pinky finger. That's a very 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 big sucker, and it's sapping nutrients. It's sapping water. Uh, having said that, uh, my dad does not control his suckers on his tomato plants, and he always has a bumper crop of tomatoes, so I don't know how important it is, but it makes me feel better. Let's look at the end of this sucker and see what it's doing. So this is the end, the other end of that sucker that's coming off of that main stem, so you can see we've got some blooms. Uh, it'll also produce its own suckers in different places, I'm sure, but that'll make fruit right there. Which is fine, which is fine. It's not like it's a, not like it's an emergency or anything, but you know, if you're going to control your suckers, if you choose to control your suckers, make sure you do it young when you're not going to damage the plant too bad. These next couple of rows are what we in the South call butter beans. I think a lot of the areas of the country call them lima beans or baby limas. These are, if I can remember correctly, Ford Hook. 242 or I can't remember the number. I'll have to find it for y'all and just kind of put it as an annotation on the video But these are my butter beans and I had to replant these actually. That's why I've got different sizes of plants out here I, I tend to plant things pretty early sometimes and A lot of times it's too cold and they just see just kind of rot in the ground, but these are my butter beans. They're bush beans They're not uh, they're not pole beans. So they really don't run uh, They just sit here as bushes and they, I believe that they'll bear all year as long as I keep them picked. I don't have any uh, any beans on them yet, but they're looking really nice. They kind of, the first batch kind of got off to a rocky start. That's why I had to replant. But these are quite nice, and I've got high hopes for these. I'm really looking forward to some good butter beans. This next section are my potato plants. I had a video a couple of months ago on planting potatoes. And this is probably the ugliest area of the garden right now because it won't be long until I get to harvest these potatoes. Now these potatoes have really done well this year. There are a lot of weeds here in the middle, unfortunately. The reason for that is there's really no point in me trying to weed them right now because in a couple couple or three weeks, they're coming out of the ground. Let's, um, let's see what we got right here. I've been digging out every now and then just to get some new potatoes to have with lunch. It gives me great joy to come out here and be able to, um, that's a rock. It gives me great joy to be able to come out here and grab just a few potatoes so I can have some lunch. It's just nothing better than some good fresh potatoes. I think these are the plain old red potatoes. Here we go, there's one. That's just a, that's just what you would call a new potato. Those little things are delicious. Boiled with some salt on them. I'll tell you what, let's just yank this out of the ground and I'll take these to the house. There we go. Yeah, these are, these are standard red potatoes, but it won't be long for these will be done. Uh, you harvest these things when the leaves all turn yellow uh, they're getting close. Some of them are starting to turn yellow from the bottom. The Yukon Golds over there, uh, I've got half 
this section planted in Yukon Gold, half in red potatoes. The Yukon Gold seem to be a little bit farther along. I don't know. Not really sure. There's some new potatoes. Not really sure if they uh, if that's normal, but it appears that they're turning yellow faster. It's just thoroughly amazing to me that I can stick a potato in the ground and it and it brings forth it brings forth multiple multiple duplicates of itself. I tell you what, this is this is therapeutic. If y'all y'all are stressed out and need some need some kind of a therapy program, my cousin calls this terra therapy or dirt therapy. Let's see what we got out of those two plants. There's quite a few new potatoes still there. So I'll have to pick those off of the vines, but yeah, those are that's some delicious stuff right there. So we have just recently discovered these little sweet snacking peppers and uh, they are really, really good for uh, you dip it in hummus or guacamole dip or something like that. So of course I went completely overboard and planted, what is that, 12, 14 plants of these things. Now here we've got lunchbox orange sweet snacking peppers and if you can see a lot of these plants are burned looking. Uh, when I first planted these peppers, I really didn't know what fertilizer I should put on them, and I didn't really do any research. So I just, like I do with most things, I uh, mixed the soil with some triple 10 fertilizer and I ended up with nitrogen burn on some of these. They are coming back now. They were, of course, it still looks kind of sick and droopy, but uh, I think they're going to make it out. This plant is kind of the roughest, one of the roughest looking ones. You can see this one looks much, much better. This is also a lunchbox orange sweet snacking pepper. This is a yellow snacking pepper. And gosh, I hate, I hate to even show these, but just be careful when you're doing your fertilizer for your tomato, um, excuse me, your pepper plants. I have recently discovered that uh, peppers don't need a lot of nitrogen. And I really just kind of went overboard on the fertilizer, but I think they're gonna pull out. You can see there's some nice new growth down in the middle of that. And I really think that these are going to pull out and make it, but they're really ugly in the meantime. These are Lemon Dreams Sweet Snacking Pepper. So I've only got one of those. Those are quite expensive. These were some kind of a specialty breed, I guess. I'm not really sure. This is a this is an orange snacking pepper, a Tangerine Dream, and that one's that one's pulling out of its its malady as well. Uh, this is a Cubanelle Sweet Pepper. I don't know what it is. It just said sweet pepper, so I said, hey, let's plant it. This next one is a, that's a red bell pepper. This is a pimento pepper. I decided to plant this because I like pimento cheese. This next very sick looking pepper is a hot pepper. I got it because I'm interested in making salsa this year. I think this will probably be a pretty good additive to it. You see some now these last two are the most recent pepper plants that I have planted and I got these uh, mostly so I could make sure we had some of these sweet peppers in case the other ones did not recover from their nitrogen burn. But this is a lunchbox orange and so is the other one. But you can see the difference. I didn't put any fertilizer down when I planted these and they look very healthy and nice. So it was mostly an experiment to see is it really a fertilizer problem? Is it something else? So I think it has been confirmed that it definitely was a fertilizer problem. These are three rows of sunflowers. My wife's favorite flower is sunflowers, so I threw out some, about three rows right here of that. I've got a small little flower patch planted for my daughter over here. I'm interested to see what those turn into. Um, she seems to be pretty excited about those. These are my sweet potatoes. These have just now recently started really growing well. I uh, was kind of getting worried about them because they didn't seem to be growing. And my wife reminded me, she said, uh, it seems to have happened a couple of years ago when we planted them. They just kind of lingered for a long time, and then they exploded. So they seem to be coming along pretty well right now. I am very interested to see to see what happens with these. But we do love sweet potatoes. We like to cut them up into cubes. We like baked sweet potatoes. We'll cut them up into cubes and just bake them in the oven. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with sweet potatoes, and we really enjoy them. 
So this is the different stuff that I'm using in my garden this year. I'm not an organic farmer, or sorry, an organic gardener. If y'all are, uh, more power to you. If y'all have a better way of doing this stuff, I am, I am certainly open to suggestions. Uh, this stuff has been working for me this year. And uh, I, as long as it works, I plan to continue. But like I said, if you have a better way to do it and it's organic, I'm more than willing to more than willing to listen. Uh, this is Dicanel fung fungicide. I put this on my tomatoes. It says you can also put it on potatoes and squash, cucumbers, and uh, I'm not sure what else. You just have to read the label directions. But this prevents early blight, late blight, different types of rust, mold, vine rot on potatoes. And I have really just been spraying it on pretty much everything in the garden. Um, it seems to be a pretty good preventative. Tomatoes are such a delicate thing to grow, and I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that everything is disease-free this year. Uh, this is a um, this is just a calcium supplement for tomatoes to prevent blossom end rot. And I have had little brown spots on my tomatoes before in previous years. I don't know if this will prevent that or not, but I just wanted to stay on top of it. All this is is a topical spray that gives a little bit of extra calcium to the plants. That blossom end rot occurs when you have too much, not enough calcium in your fertilizer, in your soil, and those, those tomatoes will just start rotting from the end. So I use this stuff as well. This is Promethrin dust. It just is sold as garden pet and livestock dust. Uh, Promethrin is a, a pyrethroid, a synthetic pyrethroid. It's a chrysanthemum derivative originally, and this is synthetic, of course, but it's not an organic pesticide, but I put it on everything in the garden. I'll put it on my uh, potatoes to get those potato bugs, to prevent the potato bugs from getting on there and to get whatever is on there out. Uh, it's good for Japanese beetles. It's good for cutworms. I put it on my squash, zucchini, and cucumbers to prevent cutworms. Uh, it'll knock out aphids. Um, squash bugs, army worms, and it's also good on fruits and stuff like that. But this stuff has been really good so far. I like it. I've got a. Let me show you my. Let me show you my applicator that I use. This is the applicator that I use to apply this Promethrin dust. It's a Gilmore brand, which is a pretty nice brand. Uh, it does a really nice job, and it's very efficient too. It doesn't use a whole lot of dust as you're um, as you're going along it doesn't use a ton of dust so this little four pound bag actually will last a pretty pretty fair amount of time so I, I, I do this stuff weekly i'll put this on weekly just the entire garden i put this on weekly on just the tomatoes and the peppers uh, this will also help prevent rot on the the pepper plants and i put this on weekly on uh, just about everything you don't have to put it on everything but it works good on squash cucumbers tomatoes potatoes um, but I don't think you're going to hurt anything just, just spraying it. This is the fertilizer that I'm using for for my tomatoes. I was using a, oh, this stuff right here. It's just Pennington brand and it's tomato and vegetable fertilizer tablets. But the nitrogen content on these is quite high. It's 20, 20, 20 is the analysis on it. And I'm just trying to get away from using so much nitrogen in the garden. Part of me, this may be a conspiracy, but a conspiracy theory, but I, part of me feels like they put tons and tons of nitrogen in these fertilizers so that you can visibly see lots of pretty green growth. But up under it, it's it's just not necessary. Uh, I feel like, I feel like it's just, you know, not particularly necessary. You need the magnesium, you need that potassium for good root growth and fruit growth or vegetable growth. But I really think I really think 20 is just too much night. I could be wrong about that. Let me know what you let me know what you think about this fertilizer in the comment section. But I got these Joby's fertilizer spikes. The analysis on these is 6% nitrogen, 18% uh, phosphate, and 6% uh, potash. So these right here is just a these are a uh, slow release thing. You're supposed to really put them in when you first plant your tomato plants and uh, and let it go from there. But these just seem to be much more reasonable and effective effective to me. I did not put these in when I first planted my plants because I just recently discovered them. Put them in maybe a couple of weeks ago, so I don't expect to have to fertilize anymore. Um, like I said, I did also fertilize these plants with some triple tin when I first put them in. As you saw, that resulted in some nitrogen burn on the pepper plants especially. I uh, had one or maybe two, I'm not sure. One at least tomato plant, they got, oops, they got nitrogen burn as well. And so I'm probably gonna just start 
probably just going to start uh, just sticking these in there when I first plant the tomato plant. So just be just be careful with your fertilizer. You can burn up your plants as quick as you can help your plants out, especially if you get them too close to the roots or just simply put too much in there. So I'm glad I found this right here. This is exactly what we're trying to prevent with this calcium supplement in these, these potatoes. This is blossom end rot right here. So we'll yank that one off because it's never gonna do anything. Um, yeah, look at that. Uh, that's blossom end rot. That comes from a calcium deficiency. And that's why we're spraying this stop rot on these things just to prevent that. Now this fruit will not recover. I'll have to throw this one out. Uh, my only hope is to make sure this plant gets sprayed down well and and uh, maybe it'll fix fix the deficiency that the plant clearly has. So this is the stop rot that I have mixed up here. Not two tablespoons per gallon is sufficient with that particular brand that I've got. Um, when you get your sprayer, don't get a cheap sprayer. Get a decent sprayer. This is not the most expensive sprayer in the world. It's a Scotts brand from Home Depot, but it seems to work pretty well. It has a nozzle, well, that's dirty, but it has a nozzle that you can turn to get different spray, spray streams. You got a cone and a stream and a fan right there. So far, it's worked really well. And uh, when you spray these plants, they soak them down really good. Uh, you're not going to hurt these plants unless your unless your concentration is a little bit too strong. But just get it up in there and make sure you get some supplement, get some calcium supplement on these plants before your before your blossom end rot starts. Something else that I have done this year, especially on the tomato plants, is I've put this black, uh, I'm not even sure what you call it, this black matting down right around the plant, and it's done a pretty fair job keeping the weeds out. Of course, there's a weed right here. You're going to have some weeds. You can't prevent them all, but you can see where the weeds kind of stop and the... Um, the hill starts it seems to be pretty clean right around the plant doesn't prevent every last one of them but it seems to uh, keep the weeds next to the plant at least at a manageable level and that stuff's not particularly expensive and it seems to go a pretty long way to keep my garden watered we have a pond you can't see it from here it's down that hill we have a pond with a honda water pump and a series of pipes that come up here to the garden and the, the Howard, the gentleman that helps me, he said, I don't really have any excuse for not being able to grow stuff because creek water is about the best thing you can put on the garden. And I'm inclined to agree with him. But this is my irrigation system for the garden. It's, I would say it's pretty simple, but uh, there was some pretty significant expense installing it initially. But there's no point in having a garden if you can't have a good source of water to it. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sprinklers out here. Uh, this one services the uh, Kentucky Wonders and part of the tomatoes. That one over there, if you can see it, services the squash, cucumbers, zucchinis, uh, pole beans, and strawberries. That one that we just left services the peppers and the sweet potatoes and the sunflowers. There is one on this corner down here. That services the potatoes. And if you see that spigot right there, there's a hose that runs across the potatoes or to the side of the potatoes to that T-post. Well, those are really cool, by the way, those little T-post sprinklers. They're really, really convenient. Doesn't put out a lot of water, but they are very convenient, very easy and simple. I got that at Tractor Supply, by the way. That thing has been the trick. But that services part of the potato plants, the butter beans, those, oh, I didn't show you all the squash over there, uh, and these, these tomatoes right here. So that's my irrigation system for the garden, and I water uh, just kind of when I feel like it needs it, maybe an inch or two a week is probably sufficient, but just be careful with your watering because you can make tomatoes just split uh, all to pieces if you water, if you water too much. I forgot to show you, these are spaghetti squash. I just stuck these in the ground on the hill and I put them next to the Kentucky Wonders because I had a little bit of space on a trellis, but I mostly planted these for the baby. We're probably going to make, um, baby food out of this stuff. These are two butternut squash plants. Uh, again, we planted these to make baby food out of. Uh, they've been coming along really well. 
This is the Tipo sprinkler that I was telling you about a few minutes ago. This has been a really, really cool, cool little product. And I got this at Tractor, <coughs> excuse me, at Tractor Supply. And I've been very, very satisfied. The convenience of it is just so good because I've got the T-post here already. And that just, uh, it's, it's just so nice just to be able to stick a sprinkler on top of it and go. The hose I also got at Tractor Supply. This is one of the worst water hoses you could possibly purchase. It cost about $13. And having said it's the worst water hose you can possibly purchase, it has worked very well for about three years now. Um, it's pretty much a piece of junk. It's one of those thin ones made out of very cheap material in some factory in China. But having said that, I leave it laying here all year and it gets sunlight all year. And as long as I don't move it around too much, it doesn't crack. So I expect if I can just kind of leave it alone, leave it in one spot, it will, um, it should be able to service me for, for a few more years. And $13 really isn't too bad. I hate to leave a good water hose out in the sunshine, but I don't, I don't mind leaving this one out. Oh, and there's a, there's a valves on these as well, so I can cut these this water supply off when I need to, so I can choose which one is, which sprinklers going at any given time. I have to be careful about that though, because the water pump, it's going to go regardless, and there's going to be an amount of pressure on it, regardless of which one of these sprinklers is on. So I always make sure that I have enough sprinklers open and going to not put stress on the water pump. So guys, that's all I've got for today's video. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, this stuff, if you were wondering, this stuff that I'm spraying, I spray the stop rot once a week. I spray that fungicide once a week. And I put out that permethrin dust once a week as well. Uh, that permethrin dust is marketed as garden pest and livestock dust or something like that. Uh, Amazon has it, but it's like $14. My local uh, farm center had it for like $8. Try to get it locally. It's going to be a lot cheaper. Um, but that's the stuff that I use. I think gardening is a lot like beekeeping. There's, if you ask 10 gardeners the way to do something, you're gonna get at least 15 different answers. So let me know in the comments, if y'all have better ways to do this stuff, open up a conversation. Tell me what you're doing with your tomato plants, with your potatoes. Tell me what you're doing with all your stuff. I would love to learn, I would love to know. I'm certainly not an expert gardener by any stretch of the imagination, and I would love to get a conversation going. Also, let me know how much interest there is. I hit the like button on this video. Subscribe if you have not already. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I, I hope this has inspired somebody to get outside and play in the dirt. But I will see you all next time.